Today we're 300% speedrunning Cuphead, so we'll start our speedrun once we select our player, have a quick talk with Outer Kettle, and go to our first level, the tutorial. We need to do the tutorial because this speedrun includes playing every level, beating every boss on expert mode, collecting every coin, and buying every upgrade in both the main game and Cuphead's DLC. So let's grab our first coin here. After that, we walk to the right, picking up three coins from Mac on the bridge, before going to Forest Follies. In this run and gun level, our only real objectives are to dash as much as possible and pick up every coin. The enemies in this level are generally pretty easy too since they only take a single hit, so I'm pretty much always spraying, and with some good movement throughout, we get 5 coins and a victory. Next up we travel to Mausoleum 1. In this level, we need to protect the urn in the middle of the room by pairing the ghosts. This first mausoleum is pretty easy since we just have two types of ghosts, the regular guys and the fast older ones. And finally at the end, we save Miss Chalice, she gives us a super that we'll never use, and we unlock the DLC levels, which we'll go to right away. Now in the DLC, we want to grab the coin from the Miss Chalice tutorial and three coins from Newsy Cat before going on to the King of Games bosses where this guy wants us to fight his champions for money. All of these champions are only affected by parries, and we have really cool strategies for them, like for the pawns, we want to use Miss Chalice's double jump to jump up to them instead of waiting for them to come down to us, and then we can attack each one in a row, which feels amazing to pull off. Next up is the knight who has three attacks. His lunge attack where we can get three hits in, his swipe which we can also get three hits in, and his upward stab where we can get one. Then once we do a good amount of damage, I like to get hit on purpose over and over and use my invincibility frames to attack him so we don't have to wait for him to attack Attack, which gives us the win a bit quicker. So we're on to the bishop, who's a pretty annoying boss. He flies around and we have to dodge his body until we touch all of his active candles and then we can hit him with a parry. I use a lot of Miss Chalice's dodge rolls during this fight since it's really easy to get overwhelmed by him and his projectiles, but after a bit, we take him out nice and easy. Which means we're on to our second to last champion, the Rook. Instead of attacking the Rook directly, we need to parry the pink heads that he spawns and bounce them back to hurt him. The most efficient way to do this is to always stay in the air, so I try to dash into a head, jump, dash again, and then go to the next head that hopefully spawned within that time. Doing this right saves a ton of time and feels really good. Now finally for our last champion, we have the Queen. In this fight, we're working together with a bunch of mice and shoot cannons at her. The cannons are kind of hard to aim since we need to go for where she's going to be at rather than where she's at. And while doing this, she often throws a ton of projectiles to rain down on us and uses this lion attack where we need to parry it so we don't get hit. I got it done though, and we end off this section with 24 coins. Which means it's shop time, and here I like to buy the crack shot, charge shot, lobber, roundabout, spread shot, and broken relic before putting on the charge shot and spread shot for now. Then we need to talk to the climbing competition winners and see the code of up right, up, left. From here, we'll quickly grab a coin from behind the bakery and then use the code we got earlier on the graves to spawn a glowing light on the middle grave, which is our next boss fight, Angel and Devil. In this fight, we have two enemies and a pretty cool mechanic. Whoever we're currently looking at in the fight is the devil, which allows us to hit them with attacks, but they can also hit us. Meanwhile, the enemy we aren't looking at is the angel, so we can't hit them, but we also aren't affected by their stuff. I found the most reliable strategy is to stay near the middle and mainly focus on one of the two bosses to shoot charge shots with. It's a little tricky because there's so much going on, but it's really just about maintaining our cool and playing around all the projectiles they throw. And finally, that's our first real DLC boss done, which turns our broken relic into a cursed relic, but we'll get into what that means later in the run. For now, it's time for the Howling Aces. In this fight, we're on a plane that's moved left or right based on where we're standing. And for the first phase, we're fighting the Bulldog. He has two main attacks where he goes down to one of the sides of the screen and can either use his bone attack where he shoots three bones at us, which we can dodge by jumping over one of them or rolling under it, or the cat attack where he uses a cat to hurl three yarn balls, all of which we can duck under. All we need to do though is relentlessly use charge shots and he's done pretty easily. Next up is the tiny dogs and jetpacks, where we can use a charge shot into a charge shot EX, which immediately takes one out. 
and we can repeat that four times to get to the last phase, Sergeant Ophara. This dog starts out by blasting us with three different laser attacks, and we can use this time to get some extra damage in while we dodge them, but after that, it's time for her to turn the screen sideways, which is a bit hard to deal with, but I have way too much practice in this game now, so we just need to keep our cool. The red dog bulls go low and the yellow ones go high, so we can use that knowledge to jump over them or go under them while getting a ton of damage with our spread shot or the rexes. Then it's time for another flip, so we're upside down, and we finish out with some spread shots on the next dog bowl phase. So on to the next boss, and this is a huge run killer for me, Mortimer Freeze. In the first phase for this fight, Mortimer flies around using attacks, so we'll keep jumping up to hit him with charge shots whenever they're ready. The only real threatening attack he has in this phase is the little ice guys, so I make sure to spread shot them, and we'll keep this up until he transforms into a snowman. In this phase, we want to stay on the ground and generally pretty close to him at first. That way, when he uses his freezer attack, it's easy to run away from the bouncing ice cubes. An especially annoying part about this phase is the popsicles that come down from the sky and will block our shots, so we gotta keep an eye out for them. This is a part though where as long as we keep our cool and pay attention, he goes down fairly easily and we're on to his third phase where he becomes a snowflake. I like to stand really close to the snowflake here so we can get spread shot damage in, and since he doesn't have a hitbox, we can jump straight into him and use spread shot EXs really efficiently. This part is a bit annoying with all the projectiles to dodge, but we finally got it done, and on to Glumstone the Giant. This fight starts out with Glumstone on the right, and us on the platforms that move up and down. We can't touch the actual floor here for too long, because then gnomes will come up to poke us and deal damage. There's also other gnomes that pop up every once in a while and fire projectiles, so I like to bring the crack shot for this fight, which will auto-aim them, and this lets me focus more on Glumstone's direct attacks and dodging those. Then in the second phase, Glumstone uses two hand puppets that throw a ball back and forth. I go with the plan of dodge rolling every time they throw it, so we're a bit safer. We also have to worry about the gnomes that jump up from the ground though, and they can be a bit of trouble, but the more annoying part about them is they can get in the way of our charge shot, so I try to play around them. Finally, in the last phase, we get eaten by Glumstone and are inside his stomach, so we need to use the skulls as platforms to not go into his stomach acid. I like using the crack shot again here to focus on my surroundings, and we can make sure to survive by paying attention to what the face spits out. If it's meat, that platform will disappear, and if it's a bone, it will spawn some parryable bells that we need to hit. So pretty stressful fight, but we got it done. Now the next fight is the Moonshine Mob, and I love this fight so much. Phase 1 starts out with Charlie Longlegs crawling around, and occasionally spawning things like bombs, throwing a caterpillar, or calling in the boys to attack. Because of this, I like to bring the charge shot and the crack shot again to auto-aim the small guys. He doesn't take long to beat though, and the next phase is Lightbug. Lightbug brings in a gramophone and dances on the middle platform from left to right. Then the gramophone will have lights coming out of it that switch between being safe and damaging. I like to sit in the middle row for this fight and just roll through the damaging lights whenever they come. That way I can very easily hit Lightbug. For the third phase we have the Anteater, but we can get a bit of damage in between phases by hitting the announcer snail in his hat. Then the Anteater sticks his nose out the left or right side and sometimes tries to lick attack us. Pretty easy stuff to dodge though as long as we're paying attention, and we take him out only for a fake knockout message to happen and for the announcer snail to come back where we're just going to hit him with a charge shot and EX to finish him off. So it's time for our second to last DLC boss, Esther Winchester. This is our only flying level of the DLC, and it starts with Esther moving back and forth from the top and bottom half of her saloon while firing projectiles. I'm less worried about her though and more worried about the bird who drops dynamite and the flying horse who spits at us, so I always try to take out the horse when I can. Then for her second phase, Esther sucks in a bunch of money with her vacuum that can hit us before sending it down in safes. I like getting a super EX here for some nice damage, but then it's just about keeping our eye out for everything and eventually moving on to her third phase, which is really hard. This is cause here she turns into a sausage and tries to attack us with her swirling meat attacks, while we also have to deal with a bunch of dangling beans. That's the weirdest sentence I've ever said, but I just make sure to turn small whenever possible and keep up the pressure on Esther, leading us to her last phase where she gets packaged into a meat container. In this phase, we need to dodge the sausage links by going through their skinnier casing parts and avoiding all the pepper she shoots at us. And since we only had one HP this part, I was pretty terrified of losing the run, especially since it was this good. But I clutched up and we're on to the last boss of the DLC, Chef Saltbaker. Now this fight is probably top 3 hardest of the entire speedrun since there's so much stuff constantly raining down at us and trying to take us out. 
First, we have his limes, which switch between going above and below us. While we also need to pay attention to the fireballs on the ceiling of the level, that come down every once in a while. Then, before the lime attack is even done, he sends out sugar cubes that we also need to start dodging from the other side. And it keeps up this pace with all these projectiles for the entire first phase of this fight, making this a huge reset point for me. But I was determined to make this run survive. For the first phase, I really like using the crack shot since it's difficult to focus on shooting Salt Baker and dodging his attacks at the same time. I also use EXs here for a bit of extra damage, and with only 1 HP lost, we're on to phase 2. Here we need to shoot the pepper containers at the corner of the screen to attack Salt Baker, which we can do by shooting a stronger charge shot and then a weaker one. But there's still two fireballs and tons of leaves falling down from the ceiling, so this part of the level just feels really claustrophobic. But I had really good gameplay here, so we're onto the shortest phase where there are saws at the bottom of the screen and some weird salt statue thing jumping around. I like to use Crack Shot again since it's just more consistent, and I try to dodge roll under the salt guys when I can, but I made a few mistakes, so we're down to just 1 HP. Yeah, this is terrifying. Especially since this last phase might be the hardest. Here we need to attack Salt Baker's heart that flies around the room while jumping from platform to platform. The annoying thing here is Miss Chalice's jumps are kinda short since she has the double jump, which means often a single jump won't get us to the next platform. I have lost way too many runs to this single phase, but I played absolutely out of my mind and finally was able to beat this boss and the DLC, so on to the main game. And to start out the main game bosses, we have the root pack. In the first phase, we face the potato, who I like to get really up close to and use my spread shot. He has pretty easy attacks to jump over, so this is a good strategy to beat him quickly. Next for the onion, we're not gonna attack it. After a while, this makes him happy and puts us right to the next phase, the carrot. There's also a secret mini boss with the radish that pops up from the ground and spins around since we didn't attack the onion, but we don't actually need to fight the radish and can solely focus on beating the carrot by hitting him with spread shot EXs and barely dodging anything since we have plenty of health. So that means we're on to Ribby and Croaks, and this fight is a lot harder in expert mode than normal, which you'll see right away with their first phase, where instead of Ribby and Croaks attacking at different times, they attack at the same time. This is a little hard to deal with and made me lose 1 HP from some bad play but I kept my cool and kept attacking Ribby straight on with my spread shot, putting us to the next phase. Here the plan is to just stick close to Croaks and constantly spread shot. During this phase, Croaks will try to blow us towards Ribby, and Ribby will fire a few different projectiles, but it's not too bad overall, and now they're going to turn into a slot machine, where we need to dodge their coin attacks and hit the slot handle once it goes pink. Then we can get three different attacks from them, which right at the start we got the tiger. In this attack, we need to dodge the spike casino chips and balls bouncing out of them, but it's really just about finding a good tempo to go in between, and I barely ever get hit on this one anymore. Second was the bull attack, where their casino chips spit fire above or below them. Again though, it's really just an attack where if you know what to do, it's not too bad. This one's a bit more about patience though to not rush, and that's another no hit. Then for our final slot pole, we got the snake, which is just fast moving chips we need to jump on, but since the boss was so low on health, we finished it up before seeing too much of the attack. Now we're on to Goopy, and I think we all love this guy. Doesn't change me wanting to murder him though. So for the first phase, Goopy jumps around, and we can keep going under him to dodge his attacks, and whenever he uses his large face attack, we can duck under that while constantly doing damage. Then eventually, Goopy decides his problem is he's not big enough, so he eats a jelly bean and transforms. It's literally the exact same fight though, just with a bigger hitbox to dodge, so we get through it pretty quickly. Finally, Goopy becomes a gravestone, and we need to hit the face of it. I like to keep charging up charge shots and dash whenever he uses his fall over attack. This is probably the easiest fight in the game though, so we're on to Hilda where the difficulty skyrockets. And that's because finally it's time to use the cursed relic we got in the DLC. Basically the cursed relic is a charm that we need to upgrade throughout the game to eventually transform it into the divine relic. To do this we need to beat bosses with it to make it slowly upgrade, and as we upgrade it, it gives us better effects. To start though, we're at level 0, and we only have a single HP. We can get more HP though by parrying attacks, but it's super difficult in this fight, and just because of this single charm, the fight goes from super easy to one of the hardest in the speedrun. Still, it's very worth it to use the curse relic on flying levels, since it also randomizes your weapon every time you stop holding attack. 
And since plane levels only have two possible attacks, these are our best chances at not dying and going fast. But as you can see, I surprisingly played this level super well and even regenerated one HP. So things were going great into the last phase where I was able to survive the entire fight without a single hit taken. By the way, the charm needs a total of 16 points to transform into the divine relic and all IO1 bosses add two points to that counter. So we're at two out of 16. But now it's time for our second run and gun level, Treetop Travel. I like to bring the crack shot for this level, and it's really just about using our dodge rolls effectively at the beginning and playing a bit patient. The bugs rolling around are pretty annoying, so I definitely don't want to go nearly as fast as our first run and gun, especially since I did not want to lose this really good run, so it was a mixture between playing fast and playing safe. Then once we switch from moving to the right to climbing, it isn't too bad besides the fact that Miss Chalice's jumps kinda suck, and that means in a lot of situations we can't use a single jump and are forced to use a double jump. This can put us in some weird scenarios, but honestly can't complain too much because I mean, we do have a double jump. Finally, the ending is really easy with Miss Chalice, and we can use her to jump over the huge bug at the end since you don't actually need to fight these guys. So time for the last level of IO1, Flowey. Flowey and Expert difficulty is really hard at the beginning. The biggest reason is for phase one, instead of switching around his attacks, he only uses the one where he spawns a bunch of smaller enemies. Because of this, I try to parry the pink seeds since they have the most annoying enemies, and for the other guys who spawn, we can use our crack shot. Then finally, once this part is done, it becomes much easier since Flowey just uses his other phase one attacks, so I try to get as close to him as possible and pop some EXs. After that, on his last phase, we can no longer touch the ground because of his roots and need to stay on the platforms that occasionally get attacked. But again, compared to the very first part of this fight, everything else is super easy and with just a bit of time we get io one officially done well almost done because we also need to grab this coin that unlocks after the flowey fight but now we're on to io 2 and bonbon bon. for bonbon bon, her first phase gives us three mini bosses and we got the most annoying one first the muffin the muffin guy jumps around and tries to splash us with his frosting so i try to stay away and hit him with charge shots whenever he hits the ground next we got the waffle which flies around the map and occasionally separates its body to attack us with its different pieces. Yeah, it's a weird and probably painful attack, but again, stay away and charge shot from afar. Then the third mini boss was the Gumball, who's definitely her easiest mini boss since she just follows your movement. I somehow did get hit here though, but we still took him out, so it's fine. Now while Bonbon bon transitions to her last phase, I like to get a couple spread shot EXs directly in her face before backing away and using charge shot again. In this phase, she has an attack where she throws her face at us and one where some candy balls roll on the ground, but we get it done onto our next running gun. This is Funfair Fever and it's a pretty fun level. It starts out with this trampoline guy who follows underneath us, but we barely even need to use him since we have Miss Chalice, so we double jump over almost everything. Then there's this part with the magician trying to attack us and people rolling on balls, but it's super simple as well. Third, we have a couple walls of enemies blocking our way and these platforms that collapse when they're hit by cannonballs. I like to use the spread shot here to deal with the little guys and eventually we make it over to the wall of cannons where we can charge shot them two times and take them out. Now it's another guys on balls section, but again, very little problems. And that leads us to our next mini boss, which we completely skip by jumping over. And yeah, I love doing that. So finally onto to the last section where there's a giant hot dog shooting condiments at us and pretzels jumping on every few platforms. So I like to roll under the pretzels to stay safe and eventually just damage boost through the hot dog at the ending, giving us another five coins and a win. But we don't have time to celebrate because it's another cursed relic level, this time with Wally Warbles. Now this level isn't the worst with only one HP, but there's a lot of different things that can hit you, so I like playing it fairly safe. At the first phase, I try my best not to take out the entire line of birds that come through, that way we can parry the pink one at the end, but it's kind of hard sometimes and is a risky scenario if Wally hits us with a surprise attack, but I was able to get two parries off here, so we were closer to some additional HP. Then in the second phase, Wally hurls a ton of feathers towards us, but they're not that hard to dodge. Honestly, this is one of the easier phases, but we do get a super EX during it to get to the next phase pretty quickly. And here Wally's son, Willy Warbles, comes out, and this guy flies around with a group of spinning eggs. You want to get really up close to his son, which is high risk, but also gets us a ton of damage. 
Willie also occasionally shoots us with a gun, but the shot is really easily parryable, and we're on to the final phase where Wally is two feet in the grave. Here he's carried around on a stretcher, and we need to use our bomb attack to hit him from above. I like saving a super EX for here when it gets a bit sketchy, but I was way closer to losing this fight than I would have wanted. In the end though, I barely clutched it out, and now his paramedics decide to put on their chef hats and eat him. You can't trust anyone nowadays. And since IL-2 bosses are worth 2.5 cursed relic points, that means we're now at 4.5 out of 16, and we'll get our first HP with only two parries instead of three. But we're back to Miss Chalice for the Dragon Boss fight. To start this fight, we only really use the charge shot so we can stay pretty far back. This is good since it gives us plenty of times to dodge his fireball attack and laser beam eye attack. The dragon also sometimes uses his tail and it pops up from the bottom of the screen, so we need to pay attention to that and it isn't too bad to dodge. After a bit, the dragon moves over to the left side of the screen and spawns a bunch of tiny fire guys. I like to switch to the lobber here since he's lower to the ground and all we need to do is pay attention to when the fire guys are about to jump so we can move slightly out of the way. Finally, we have his third phase where he gets a total of three heads and shoots fireballs at us, which when they're shot, explode and shoot electricity projectiles. So I want to stay above them with my lobber attacks and also stay up in the clouds for when the dragon uses his huge fire attacks, which are always lower on the screen. I played this a bit more risky than I should have, but before I died, we were able to get the win. At this point, we're going to grab two coins, one from this juggling guy and another behind this building thing before going to Funhouse Frazzle. This run and gun level has the gimmick of being able to parry the pink cards and switching our gravity upside down. It's a pretty fun gimmick, and we can use it to dodge different attacks. Then in the star section, I like staying on the ceiling and dodge rolling under the cannonballs that the stars throw at us. After that, not too much to say about this level, we just need to be careful and not mess with the gravity too much, because if you accidentally parry a card, it can cause us to get unneeded damage, like right here. But finally, once we make it to the end, all we need to do is hit this wall's eye with a couple charge shots and walk away with our next five coins. So that wasn't too bad, and neither is Mausoleum 2. This is another ghost level where we can't shoot the ghosts and need to parry them. Not too much changes from the last one of these levels though, except now there's these spinny guys who go all around the room. They take a super long time to get to the urn though, so I just don't focus them too hard when I don't need to, and after taking out a few, we get our next super, and it's time for the genie boss fight, after really quickly grabbing another coin from this next NPC. Now on to Jimmy the Genie, of course we're using the Cursed Relic again, and this might be one of the hardest fights for me, mostly because of the beginning. In Phase 1, the Genie can do one of three different attacks, and this time we got the Treasure Chest which shoots tons of different treasure at us, and it's really hard to dodge all of it. My main goal was to get two parries here to get an additional HP, and we were able to, so this was a great start. Next up is the Wall Attack, where I like switching to my bombs to shoot the face parts of each wall while dodging the blades going through the room. And this part is usually pretty easy, but of course, I got hit. Gotta love being on 1 HP. But we're still okay, and in the next phase, we get a ghost in a coffin who shoots planets and other ghosts at us. I decided to play this super safe and try to keep my distance a good amount, but also got a nice super EX to get in some extra damage, which helped us beat this phase fairly quickly. So, on to phase 4, and this phase is really scary with 1 HP. The genie makes an exact replica of us who tries to shoot us with their projectiles, while we also need to dodge his hat, which also shoots projectiles. I try to use this phase to get some extra health, which worked for a second, and then I got another super EX, but of course, I can't have nice things, so we lost that health on his next attack, and we're going into the final phase with 1 HP. In the final phase, we have three different pyramids spinning around, and the big guy on the right. We need to keep shooting the genie, but sometimes he'll use an attack from his head. Because of it, I like to stay down low, but sometimes that isn't possible since his pyramids occasionally shoot lasers. So all of this together resulted in maybe the closest call of the entire run, but I was barely able to survive. This speedrun is so stressful, but at least now we have 7 cursed relic points. So we're on to the last boss of IO2, Bappy the Clown. This fight used to be one of the hardest for me, but Miss Chalice makes it a lot easier. First, instead of needing to jump over Beppy, which makes it really hard to dodge his ducks, we can just do a dodge roll through him when he's trying to hit us with his go-kart, and this makes the first phase a lot easier. Now onto phase two, Beppy inflates his head, sends out a train, and attacks us with inflatable dogs. But since his head doesn't damage us, we can use a bunch of spread shot EXs and get through this one pretty easily. Next for phase three, Beppy comes down on a horsey that shoots projectiles while we still need to deal with the train. Whenever the train isn't here, I just sit beneath Beppy and fire off spread shots, 
but when we need to get on the train, we need to play a bit smarter and use our charge shot. Overall though, another easy phase, and for the last one, Beppy is now out carousel, I guess. So we want to jump on his platforms in order to dodge the train and get in as many EXs on him as possible. After a while though, he'll send out a bunch of penguins who throw baseballs at us. I wasn't really worried though since we still had 3 HP and there was no way we were losing this one. So in the end, we took him out and that's aisle 2 officially done. Which means we're on to the first boss of aisle 3, Rumor Honeybottoms. And this is another level that's way easier with Miss Chow's. We start out with the security bee, which we can simply charge shot from far away. Not too many projectiles to worry about in this section, so it's probably the easiest part. Then we have to fight Honeybottoms as she sticks her head out on one of the sides of the screen or the middle. We got the middle attack first, and in this one we need to dodge the bee bullets by jumping on different platforms. It is a little difficult just to keep the damage up during this phase, but went pretty well overall. Next she went to the right where she spawns a pink circle, and I like to just move around it using different platforms since parrying it can sometimes cause us to get weirdly hit if we aren't careful. After that she went back to the middle for this attack again, and it worked out perfectly since it's a really long attack, so it allowed us to get a ton of damage in that will carry over to the next phase. Then finally she came down in the middle of a book, which is another great time to get damage before heading to her plane form. But because we got so much damage on her in the last phase, a single charge shot finished her off and that was a pretty perfect fight. So we're on to Rugged Ridge, our next run and gun, and this is a pretty annoying level. First, at the beginning, there's a bunch of pyro heads circling the platforms. There's also these mountain goats that throw pickaxes, which I got hit by with some bad playing, and a mountain lion that we need to jump over. Getting hit once was fine though, since we made it to the elevator section, where we need to fend off clay golems and grim juniors. This is just an auto scroller and not too hard, and then at the end, there's another coin. But after that, some really annoying stuff happened. First, there was a satyr who popped right into me, and honestly, I don't think I've ever had that happen before. Then after that, I took some really weird damage by this wall, not sure what exactly happened there. And finally, at 1 HP, my heart was beating out of my chest, and I took my first death of the speedrun. I dusted myself off though, since this was still a great run, and we made it back to the section with 4 HP. This part of the level is really annoying, since if you try to go fast, you need to make a bunch of blind jumps into fireballs. I have this section pretty well mapped in my head, but I made a few mistakes which really hurt. Then right at the end of the level with a single HP, I made the stupidest mistake of my life, and that's the second death in this one level. So yeah, my heart was not doing the best, but I took this opportunity to say it was okay and we could still get a sub 130. So I kept going and finally got the win. I now officially hate this level though. And we're going straight from one stressful situation to the next, since it's time to face Dr. Call's robot with the Cursed Relic. This is a super stressful level, but here's the strategy. First, we want to take out the head, because its attacks are some of the most annoying. Then we can go to the stomach of the robot and start attacking that, while occasionally pairing the pink laser devices, which help us get a bit more HP. Then we can deal with the middle section of the robot, and after that's taken out, he reveals his heart. This part is just about focusing hard on everything around us and aiming very intently on the heart. So much can go wrong in this section, but I kept my cool and we're at 3 HP into the next phase. And this phase is quick since we can use a super EX to do a ton of damage. Then we just need to hit him a few more times, leading us to the last and most frustrating phase. In this phase, Dr. Call sends waves upon waves of electric balls that we need to dodge along with these electric walls that move up and down. This isn't that hard to beat, but it goes on incredibly long, making it a battle of stamina. At the end though, I finished it out, and that means there are only two more Cursed Relic stages, since all Isle 3 bosses give us three Cursed Relic points, meaning we're now at 10 out of 16. Before those though, it's Sally's stage playtime. This fight is honestly super easy. It starts with Sally in her regular form, and all she really does is jump around us and sometimes throw a fan. So the entire plan is to just stay close and use our spread shot. Next phase is more or less the same thing, but there's also an annoying baby that throws milk bottles from the background building. In this attack where Sally spawns toy cars that go up to the ceiling and fall down on us, but same general game plan. Third, Sally becomes a demon and we can go right below her and spread shot upwards. She has a few attacks like Meteor, which I like breaking so it isn't in the way, Wave which we can roll under, and Lightning which we need to dodge by going back and forth. Finally, she ends her play as an angel, and this part is really easy since we can just double jump up to her, hit her with a charge shot, and repeat this until she's taken out. 
But after all that, we have our next boss, Werner Wormann, and the difficulty goes right back up, since it's time for the Cursed Relic again. Unfortunately, we need to fight one non-flying boss with the Cursed Relic to reach 16 points, and Werner is the easiest one to do. For Phase 1, it's mostly just about dodging all his projectiles, and when he uses his catapult attack, we can get a few parries. We also need to keep track of what weapon we're using to make sure it actually damages him and also does a good amount. Then Phase 2 is really stressful since Werner goes to the middle of the stage and switches between attacking the higher and lower platforms. I try to use as many EXs as possible since it's really important to get this wave done but we need to worry about both Werner's fire attacks and the bottle caps that come and attack us from each side. I'm very surprised I did as well as I did, and we made it to the end where it's kitty time, and again, it's really important to use some EXs as much as possible. This section has so many things that can kill us, especially once the ghost rats get spawned, so we need to focus up. You technically can also kill the ghost to make this a bit easier, but it takes way too much time, so we focus directly on the cat's face. And after a bit, we got three more Cursed Relic points for a total of 13 out of 16. Only one more of these. But before we can get to that, it's time for Captain Brennybeard, and this fight's really fun. The things we need to worry about here are the barrel that will drop on us whenever its face gets angry, Brennybeard's attack where he shoots us with an octopus, the enemies he spawns like this shark attack, and the ship shooting cannonballs at us. But after a bit of damage, Brennybeard gets kicked off his ship, and we need to fight it directly. In this phase, the ship shoots fireballs that spin around as they move forward, so we want to use some careful movement to dodge them. Then after a bit, it'll charge up a huge beam attack, but we can thankfully crouch to dodge this while we get some spread shots in. Then we'll just keep repeating this until that's another boss done, leading us to the last run and gun level at Perilous Piers. This stage's problems at the beginning are the flying fish above us and the volcano guys that shoot upwards, which I always choose to roll by. And it's honestly pretty easy to lose HP if you're not careful. Then we make it to these big crabs that can be used as platforms, but we obviously don't want to wait for their slow walking animations, so we'll dash past them into the Captain Crustacean section where this lobster chases after us. He's not great at his job though since he's kind of slow, and after making it to the ship we're safe from him. Then it's time to ride the octopus while an oyster tries to shoot pearls at us and a bunch of shrimp jump at us, so I like the crack shot here to make it a bit safer. We also need to make sure to parry the octopus's jewel on his head to shoot cannonballs at the rocks in our way, and finally we make it to the end of our last run and gun level, but we still have four more bosses. And for the first of those four, it's Kala Maria time, and this is also the final time of using our cursed relic. And this fight is stressful for pretty much the same normal reasons of having 1 HP and a bunch of stuff able to hit us. Thankfully, this level is also pretty abundant in stuff to parry, so we can get an HP in the first phase and then get in a nice super EX. After a bit longer, some eels come to electrocute Maria and she goes full Medusa on us. Here she can turn us to stone with this annoying attack, and then she sends her eel friends to try to finish the job, and unfortunately it worked. And this meant we only had 1 HP so it was super stressful, and while I would have loved to get some more parries for an additional HP, we finished her second phase before I got the shot. So on her last phase where she's a flying head, I played it super safe by always trying to be far away from any projectiles. This way, if she freezes us, we have time to mash out of it and not get hit. I was honestly pretty sure we'd lose here, but we clutched it up, giving us 16 out of 16 cursed relic points, turning it into a divine relic. But we still got bosses to defeat, so we'll grab a coin from behind this food booth, and we're on to Phantom Express. For this level, I like bringing the pea shooter, completely because the first phase is annoying. Here the ghost train shoots a bunch of eyeballs at us, and the pea shooter helps with getting rid of them. There's also a bunch of flying pumpkins that try to drop things to move our cart, so we have to be careful about pairing those too. Next phase we got a skeleton guy who pops his head out of one of the train's three carts, and the other two get hands that strike downwards. This is a good spot to use charge shots, since that makes it easier to hit him wherever he spawns, and that's two out of the four phases done. So for phase three, there are two different heads on both sides of the train, and we want to use our charge shot again. Then after a while, one will use a beam attack that we can dodge by being completely to the left or right side of the level, and it's not too bad. Then for the other head, I don't even bother moving my cart since the charge shot works great from far away, and we're on to the last phase with 2 HP. But this is a super hard phase, especially on Expert. For this one, we need to hit the train's tail to open up its heart, and then blast the heart with charge shots. But there's so many projectiles and things to worry about that I made two bad mistakes, and that's death number three, and our first death from a boss. This one felt really bad. But I wasn't gonna let my effort go to waste, so I got over my feelings of disappointment and completely destroyed the train on the second time around. Two more bosses left, but before that, we have a few things to do. 
First, we head to the Underworld and grab a coin right here, which is the last coin of the game, and then it's time for Mausoleum 3. And honestly, same old, same old for this level, just a lot more ghosts coming through, and one new kind. The new kind of ghost is this super big guy, who spawns two smaller ghosts once you take him out, but we can do three parries in quick succession, and that destroys everything at once. Next, we're heading to the shop, and here we buy everything from our boy, meaning truly all that's left is King Dice and the Devil. But before that, we're actually switching off Miss Chalice, and instead we'll bring Smoke Bomb for a reason I'll explain later. So let's start with King Dice, and this is a lot harder in 100% than any percent, because to get 100%, we need to beat all of his mini bosses. Normally for King Dice, you only need to defeat whichever three you have the easiest time with, but for this run, we can't skip anything. For our first boss, we have the Tipsy Troop. This is a collection of three different types of alcohol, all with a different attack. The whiskey shoots his alcohol into the air and it lands down at us, the rum tips over and attacks the ground, and the martini spawns little olives that shoot us. But altogether, it's pretty easy since we can just take them out one by one, so on to the next. By the way, in between, the best way to always get a 1 on the dice is by hitting it as soon as King Dice spawns it. Little tip if you ever want to try the speedrun. And next up is the poker chips, which is pretty simple. The only way to damage the boss is hitting the top stack of blue chips, and whenever he attacks, we can smoke dash through the lower chips and duck under any higher ones. And pretty quickly, that's number 2 done. Now we have Mr. Wheezy, and in this fight, we want to stand on the side that the boss isn't at and shoot him from afar. He has spinny fireballs, but they aren't too bad, and then when he moves to the other side, we move as well. After shooting him over 20 times, he's finally taken out. So next up is the dominoes pieces, and this one can be kinda hard. There's both projectiles the boss spawns, and the spiky ground that sometimes spawns, so it can get a little tricky, but we were patient, and we're onto the rabbit in a hat. And this one can be pretty annoying usually, but it's a bit nicer since we have the smoke bomb. He has two main attacks, one where he spawns skulls all around us and we need to smoke dash through, and another where he spawns symbols that attack and we need to parry the pink one. I also like making sure I get a couple EXs in here and there, and it takes a while, but eventually we finish it out, which means it's horsey time and this level is annoying. First we have the main horse who spawns presents and they explode into multiple horseshoes, and while we're dealing with that, there's also the little horse rider guys at the bottom. The only one that's really worrisome though is the blue ones, since they always jump up once you pass by them so that's something to keep track of. I lost a couple of health here, but I wasn't doing too bad because at the very least, King Dice gives us three free heals. Next on to the roulette, this is a super simple strategy where we charge a shot, and whenever she rushes towards us, we smoke dash into her, which both does damage and makes us dodge her hitbox. This is one of the reasons we wanted smoke bomb, and results in a quick win. Then next up, it's 8 ball time, and this guy's really easy. All we need to do is shoot upwards a bunch and use EXs when we can. There's a couple things to dodge, but it's not bad at all. And for the final mini boss, we have Mr. Chimes. I hate Mr. Chimes. First, we need to remember where the matching cards are from the beginning of the level, and then hit a matching pair to wake the monkey up so we can hit him. He'll do some music attacks until we take him out, and we repeat this for a total of 6 times. It just takes way too long. So with all of those now done, we can finally fight King Dice, and he's the main reason why we wanted Cuphead instead of Miss Chalice, since King Dice's attack is where he spawns a bunch of playing cards and we need to parry off of them, so it's better to have Cuphead with his regular parry instead of Miss Chalice with her dash parry. Other than that, it's just a bunch of shooting and EXs, meaning there's just one more boss left to go, the devil. Now at this point, I had been on an 8 hour spree of attempting this speedrun over and over again, and none of those previous runs got me to the devil, so I was kinda worried about this one. But I didn't have time for that, it was time to win. And our main goal for the first phase is to keep double jumping and hitting the devil with spread shot EXs to do a ton of damage. While we're doing this, he has a bunch of annoying attacks and all the little devils running around the ground, so there's a lot we have to keep track of. And all the mayhem did make me end up losing 1 HP, but 3 HP and into the second phase isn't too bad. Now at this point we want to solely focus on the devil's eyes. They're nice and big so we can easily hit them with spread shots and EXs to get huge damage, while we also keep track of all his attacks. After a while though, two of our platforms disappear, and it gets way more claustrophobic with tons of stuff trying to kill us. Still though, we had the same game plan of attacking his eyes and trying to dodge everything. Then finally, with just 2 HP left, we had the final phase where the devil starts crying. Immediately I got hit, which was terrifying, 
but I stuck to the game plan of shooting upwards and jumping slightly to the side whenever a poker chip fell. Finally, after what felt like way too long, we got our win and ended with a time of 1, 31, 46. Which would probably beat my goal of a sub 130 if we removed the time from the game's loads like you're supposed to do, but I was too lazy. Either way though, that's 8th place on the speedrun leaderboards, and I'll take it. Alright, subscribe if you enjoyed, bye!